Hey, what's up coders? Welcome to One Little Coder. In this video, we're going to see how to build a chatbot user interface using Microsoft Godel, which is a new model and also using radio that is going to help us create the chatbot user interface. Let me first show you how the chatbot looks like. And I'm going to also talk about certain nuances when you are building a chatbot just like this, at least for a demo. Now, if you ask me, why do you want to build a chatbot demo using Gradio? Gradio is not the tool for building a chatbot. Of course, it is very valid, but I have already made a video about how you can use the Hugging Face ecosystem to build your AI startup MVP. So in this case, I want to show you that if you want to build an AI startup MVP, then this is the best solution you have got. And this is how you can show a chatbot demo for anybody who wants to play with the tool that you are going to build. First, as you can see, I've got a very simple chatbot interface and you can see that I've already started chatting with the chatbot. So I started with the question, do you watch cricket? And the chatbot answered, not much. I don't really like to watch, but I can see it from a very few angles, different angles. Then I asked T20 versus test. If anybody who knows cricket, then I'm talking about T20 cricket, which is a 20 over cricket and test cricket, which happens for five days. So the chatbot ideally is supposed to know what am I talking about? And in this case, the chatbot or the model understands that T20 versus test is about asking about the cricket and the choice. So it says that is really tough. The ODI is a lot of fun. ODI stands for one day international, which is different format of cricket where 50 over matches played. And then finally I ask why and then it says it is a game that we can play for a long time instead of T20. You might have noticed at this point that one, the chatbot has some understanding about cricket. Second, the chatbot also remembers what we sent at the start. Like for example, we started with cricket and then we are talking about T20 versus test. And when I say why, it understands that why I'm asking this question, not just simply why random answer, but then says, you know, T20 versus T um, this um, test. Now I'm going to say, who's your, who's your favorite player? And then I'm going to send the message. And I hope that this is going to uh, link it with um, the, um, the cricket, the, the context that we are talking about. It says, I like the Indian national team the most. We like to play for the World Cup in the fall. So um, it, it kind of, it doesn't say what is a player, but again, it stays within the context of cricket. So finally, I'm going to ask a question. Uh, do you know any type of uh, dismissal? So let me ask, like in, in terms of cricket, there are a lot of different ways to get out. Probably not the best players are the ones who play the most. So this is not the relevant answer, but you can see how the entire conversation stays within the context of cricket and everything that we have spoken about. So this video tutorial is going to teach you exactly how to build something like this using completely open source solution. And you can also deploy it on Hugging Face Spaces for free if you want. And this is running on CPU, so you don't need a lot of computation. So let's get started to learn how to do the same thing. So for now, I'm going to stop this cell so that I don't eat a lot of computation. First thing is this Google Collab Notebook will be linked in the YouTube description as a GitHub repository. So you can click it and then start loading it inside your Google Collab Notebook. So if you do not know how to do it, open a new Google Collab Notebook and then go to go to file, click file and then say open notebook. Once you click open notebook, you can select the GitHub and then click give the GitHub repository loaded. Option one. Option two, you can set a file, click upload notebook and then you can download the IPYNB notebook file and upload it here. So these are multiple ways you can open it. If you are quite familiar with this, that's completely fine. If you are starting from scratch, that's completely fine. This tutorial should be ideally telling you or teaching you how to do it from scratch as well. So like I said, the model is grounded open dialogue language model. If you want to know a lot of details about the model, the model paper is linked here in the starting of the notebook. I'll link the same thing in the YouTube description as well. So you can click that and then see how the model is built, what kind of tech language data is used, what kind of tasks down team tasks this model can do and you know, a lot of benchmark scores. Once that is done, now the next step is for us to install transformers and Gradio. Transformers is for us to load the model and do um, model prediction and Gradio is for the user interface. Once you have successfully installed transformers and Gradio, the next step is for us to set up the chatbot model. So in this case, from transformers, import auto model for C sequence to D this is sequence to sequence language model and then the tokenizer as well. So unload import torch. So now you have got auto tokenizer dot from pre-trained load the model that we are loading the base model. As you can see, we are loading the base model, but you have got models of different sizes 
on Hugging Face Model Hub. So at this point, the tokenizer and model is going to get downloaded from Hugging Face Model Hub. And as you can see, it is getting downloaded. And once it gets downloaded, we need to define a predict function. Predict function where it can take a query, a natural language query as an input, and then it can get a response just like a chatbot response. One caveat here is that because this is a chatbot, we just do not want to respond to the question that is sent to us, but we also want to have a context of historic information, the history. Just like our chatbot where I spoke about T20 versus test, the chatbot had an understanding about cricket. When I talked about players, the chatbot had an understanding about cricket. So for us to give that context to the chatbot, we need to have the entire context in place. And that is what we're going to do it using history. And this is achieved on a Gradio interface by using something called a state. So Gradio state is passed from input to output during every iteration so that the interface um, has that context, the information that is passed on to the model prediction. I'll get into the details about what is it. So this is a very simple function. You have got a function called predict. It takes an input, ideally a text input, and then it also has a list that's called history, which I just said, it's going to contain the historic information. The way this model works is you have to have three important things. One is instruction. The second is a dialogue. And then the third is a knowledge. Now, what is an instruction? An instruction is what you tell the model what to do. So it says instruction given a dialogue context, you need to respond, respond, respond. You need, you need to respond empathetically, which means the model is going to respond empathetically. You can change this to respond angrily. You can change it to respond with grounded knowledge. You can change it to a lot of things. If you especially give a knowledge context, then you can change this and you can refer to the paper. It has got different instructions, how you can change the model to perform in a different task. Now, what is the knowledge? In our particular case, we did not give anything to the model as a knowledge. But for example, you are building an enterprise chatbot and you have got a lot of knowledge based articles about your own company. Let's say you want to build this for customer support. Your customer support already has a lot of technical information. So you don't want this model to take something randomly from the internet and give it, but you want the model to learn from the knowledge that you are supplying, maybe technical information, maybe a product version. These things are very specific to the industry or to the product that you are building it. Even if it is finance, healthcare, it could be domain specific knowledge. It could be product specific knowledge. It could be company specific knowledge. It could be that particular context specific knowledge. So that is the knowledge that you would ideally give it here. So if you have a knowledge, the way you give a knowledge is you can say knowledge and then you can plus and then you can give the actual knowledge in here. Uh, sorry, knowledge plus you can give the knowledge in here with space. But right now we don't have any knowledge uh, because this is just a small chit chat application, uh, friendly chat. So we are not giving any knowledge in here. So that's something to keep in mind if you want to explain if you want to um, explore this for an enterprise use case or for your own product, then ideally it is good if you're going to give a knowledge to the model. The next thing is we have history. Uh, now history is a list. Um, ideally it is a tuple of list. So what we are trying to do here is we are trying to take history, take the tuple of his uh, tuple of list and then flatten it as a list and then add the input. The input is the message that the customer has just given. For example, if you see the tuple of list is going to contain everything from here. Do you watch cricket? Not much. So this is one tuple. So then T20 versus test that is and with the response, it's going to be one. So like this, you're going to have a lot of tuple. So tuple of list and ultimately the new input is what we are going to add here, the append. So we are going to flatten the tuple of list into a list. And then we are going to append the new input question as a new element so that the model has entire information. So we're going to flatten everything as a string using join with a, with a break EOS a statement like the special token. And then we are going to call it a dialogue. So at this point we have dialogue. We don't have to print the dialogue. The next thing is we need to form the query. The query, just like I said, is a very specific pattern. So you have got instruction, you have got the dialogue, you have got the knowledge. So when it is an instruction, you have already given the word instruction and the special token or the keyword, then context, you're going to tell the model, this is a context that is a dialogue. And then finally, the knowledge right now, we do not have a knowledge, but I said, if we have a knowledge, we're going to use a special token knowledge and then give the knowledge to the model in itself. So at this point, our input query is ready, then certain parameters for any large language model top underscore P um, mix minimum length, maximum length for you to specify how long you expect the response to be. 
The next thing is you need to now encode your input, which is the query, which is like the final instruction to the model. And you're going to get the input IDs. Uh, you can call it anything. I've called it new user input ID because when I was building this tutorial, I was using a Gradio tutorial as a reference. So that's why I'm calling the same name. The next thing is simple model dot generate the input IDs, which is the tokenized input that we just got minimum length, maximum length, top P do sample and then finally convert everything into a list. And then you have got the first element that you're going to use and then decode them. That is your response. Now, before we return, we have to append this response and this input as a tuple into our existing list of tuples. Um, so you can see we have the list of tuples. So I think I think I was saying it a tuple of list before. Sorry, uh, list of tuples and then we are going to append it so that this input and its response is also added to our history. So the next iteration when we send a message, the model has the context. Now, finally, we are going to return history comma history. The reason why we are going to do it is because I like I said, when you are building a chatbot UI or any user interface with state, a gradio state, you have to return the input state, you have to catch the output state. So you, in the input also you have a state in the output also you have a state. So when you're going to return, you have state and when in the input also you have state. So this is more like your state. And that is what this is. So this defines our simple function to create a chatbot. to quickly summarize, we have a function called predict this is an input text. This history is the state the context which is uh, a list of tuples and then we have the instruction. We have the knowledge which we do not have right now and we have the dialogue which is actually the input message along with the historic message and then we form the query and we have certain model parameters and that query is now encoded and that that encoded IDs are given to the model dot generate file to generate the output then the output is decoded and finally it is appended to the history for the future um, transaction or future chat messages and then finally return the message and the state history comma history. And we are going to build our Gradio user interface, which as usual is the simplest part of this entire thing because the Gradio application does the heavy lifting for us. A very simple interface doesn't look like as simple as it is. Like if you want to do it using React or any um, latest JavaScript framework, it is not going to take only three lines of Python code, of course. But in this case, we have simple import Gradio as GR and GR dot interface. We are not using blocks, we are using interface, but if you want to use blocks for um, better um, customization, you can of course go ahead and do it. Function is predict, input is text and also the state, output is the chatbot, the response and also the state. And finally, we have got the language. Um, the chatbot indicates that this is a chatbot output, not just simply a text output. If we say a text output, it is going to just display as text, but because it is a chatbot output, it takes a tuple, splits it into one user and another user. So that's why you get to see this interface like a chatbot related interface. Launch with the debug is equal to true, share is equal to true. Debug is for us to um, see any error. Share is equal to true is for us to get an external URL if you are going to launch it in Google Collab or anywhere else. Let me run this. And then once I run this, it is going to create the interface for us. Let's see how long it takes. And like I said, this entire thing runs on CPU. So you can see how much inter in inference time it takes. Um, let me ask a question. Let me see how are you doing? How are you doing? It's going to doing well. Thanks for asking. Um, did you eat your food? Okay, it says I had about half a dozen different foods in one sitting. Don't you think it's going to make you fat. That's okay. I eat a lot of things. Cool. Um, do you have any thoughts for my dinner? What's your favorite food? I like biryani and, um, it's delicious. I don't have a lot of food. Okay. Um, do you like my food? Do you know what's my favorite food? Food. I don't know. Okay. I love the biryani. <laughs> okay. So now at this point, you learned that we could make a chatbot, a chatbot that looks good, that responds cohesively, that responds with knowledge, 
it's really good um i mean at this point i should probably end this tutorial and then i should move on but i would like to tell you one thing before i shut down this tutorial which is this chatbot has been built from reddit data and anybody who knows about reddit knows that reddit is not just simple knowledge but it has got a lot of nuances that are not always good um for example if you are building a corporate application you don't want the chatbot to respond to the customer saying that i like the shit out of it um i mean that's not how a lot of corporates work like if you have a company that responds like this that's well and good but that's not how most corporates work so at this point you can do two things one you can build an input filter first of all like if the user is going to respond something um, let's say using a foul word or toxic word so one you can have a filter at the user input end and it can filter out things two you can have a filter at the output end just like what stable diffusion did like you can have a, a non suitable for work in fw kind of a classifier at the end or a simple even a rejects to say if any of this words come in the output then you're going to say you know this um output contains um or you can you you, you can just skip it and then ask for the chatbot to create something else because if you ask the same question again and again it's going to get a different responses because of different seed value so it's very important for you to handle toxic words um talk not just toxic words to ns nsfw words toxic words words that you don't want the chatbot to talk about uh, like just like how you do stop words in a text um, text analysis um, like these are the words that you are familiar with you don't want like you don't want off and i think that is that is just like that you need to have certain words in the dictionary that you say your chatbot you don't want your chatbot to respond back so it's very important for you to do that that's point number 1 point number 2 is you can also play with the instructions here given a dialog context you need to respond empathetically or you can say you know now you can you can use it in different forms you can say angrily so i don't know how it works let's see um if you're going to see something that's not really good um let's let's see so this is another place where you can play with the instruction different kinds of instruction this is um this is very similar like prompt engineering you know you can play with the different options and then see how it wo- goes so the chatbot is running i can say how are you doing i'm doing okay i don't know what to say what's your name uh, my name is abdul let's see what does it say i'm doing I'm going to be in Australia. Are you happy? Yes, I'm in Australia. It's a nice place. Why do you, I'm sad? Um, how old are you? What's your mother's name? Okay, I don't see anything angrily at this point. That's good. Like I'm, I'm recording this video. I don't want it to throw something um bad. But the point is, you can also play with the instruction. and then give different kind of instruction to the chatbot and then see what kind of responses it makes so it's it's very important for you to keep in mind when you have such a project at an enterprise level you handle all these things make sure the instruction is very clear enough to the chatbot but still you know you can have because this is ready data and because it's a large language model nobody knows what is it is going to spit it out so it's important for us to have those filters in place if you're going to use it in production i don't think that you're going to watch my video and immediately take this code and put it in production i i mean like i have that much of confidence and um i i can understand that very well but still it is very important and it is i'm obliged to mention that that if you're going to use it in production be very cautious be very cautious about placing those filters in place so that the chatbot doesn't say uh, any, anything like you know you know i like the shit out of it or anything or but despite all these thing this is a really good chatbot like i've really had fun building and i've really had fun even um, you know uh, playing around with this this was this was a really good project for me and once again thanks to gradio because it it really makes it very very easy for us to build a chatbot interface that looks like this and if you want you can take this entire code and deploy it in hugging face um hugging face spaces just by having transformers gradio and torch in the requirements for txt file the rest of the code should ideally work without any problem um like i said this code will be in the github and then i'll link the github repository in the youtube description it should ideally work very fine for you without any issues but if you face any issues let me know in the comment section otherwise let me know how did you feel about this tutorial and i hope you take care of yourself see you in the next video peace